Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. Last episode, we ended off by realizing we don't have power. I mean, I guess we already knew that. We have this water wheel here, and this has been struggling to keep up with our machines, but we haven't really been needing our machines a whole lot as far as power goes until now. Uh, we're trying to charge up our resonant jetpack. It holds 80 million RF. It eats RF for breakfast, like five seconds, seven seconds of flying pretty much went through like 800,000 RF. It uses quite a bit. Uh, we can only power this thing. It was doing 100 RF per tick, but now that we can't keep up with the power to keep this going, yeah, our uh, RF per tick that we're putting into the resonant jetpack is going down. So we've been trying to get to this garden cloche, which required us to do a bunch of stuff. We need to get into blood magic. We need to do a little bit more lord craft. That required us to do some herba stuff. And then we also wanted to do some abyssal craft. Uh, I'm sorry, some void craft stuff um, by upping our health and then going into there. And anyway, long story short, we need to work on power. We need power in order to go through the herbus. And we also need a way for us to get that power wirelessly. That would be ideal. I don't know if we can do that or not, but that's something that I'd like to start working towards. So while we're letting our jetpack charge up, I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna take some of these splash potion of damage two that I just brewed up, and we're gonna go to the hunting dimension. We're gonna try and find ourselves an ectoplasm. It's one of those little floating slime slime guys. Glies? Guys. Slime guys that appear when you kill monsters sometimes. They don't always appear. It's like a very low chance. Uh, as far as I know, the chance is higher at nighttime. It's higher when uh, the moon's out, which it always is here. And it's higher as long as like it has direct access to the sky when the monster dies. So it really shouldn't take us that long to do this, but we're going to do this together. Uh, so the idea is uh, we just kill monsters until we see one of those guys and then we throw a splash potion at it. Shouldn't take too long, I wouldn't think. Uh, it is kind of a low chance, like a 5% chance or something. I actually don't know what the exact percentage is, but I know it's it's not really high. I think Is that one right there? There's one right there. All right, so let's take this and let's throw it at the spirit. Cool. And did we get it? We got the ectoplasm. So that's really the only thing that we need to do right now is to just get that one. Hey, get back in there. I didn't say you could come through my portal. <laughs> yeah, so that's the one thing that we need to do is just get that one ectoplasm. It's pretty simple to do. So now that we have that, we should be able to come over here and grab ourselves a oak sapling. Right, so that plus this. Oh, actually, nope, no, 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 I did this wrong. Uh, we need dirt. We have to plant the oak sapling and then click the ectoplasm on it. That's what we do. All right, so sapling, ectoplasm. So now we have a specter sapling from random things. Did I say extra utilities earlier? I'm, I meant random things, I guess. Yeah, definitely it's from random things. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to do yet another thing. Let's grab some brick. We need to grab a hopper, which this is the only one that was left. I was using that to brew those potions. Uh, all right, so we have the brick. We'll turn that into a bonsai pot plus a hopper. So now we have a hopping bonsai. And I guess we could use the, the slime grass. I'm not really sure if that has any good effect on a specter sapling, for instance. And then a, uh, a chest. Okay, so we have everything we need. Let's put this downstairs. And I guess we'll just stick it right here. This should be fine. Okay, so that. Hopping bonsai. Magma slimy grass. And this, it does not work on there. Okay, so I think you right click with a shovel to get the grass out. Yeah, so I guess the the slime grass only works with the slime saplings. I thought it would work uh, with everything else. But I guess I was incorrect. Which is fine. So we'll just put dirt in here. Sapling. And this thing is growing not like exceptionally fast, but we will have an unlimited supply of that ectoplasm after a little bit of time here. I guess we should take a look at the, uh, the spectry sapling in the bonsai trees. It says two of them at a 20% chance. 
5% chance of another sapling. The leaves and the wood don't really matter. And I guess the sticks don't matter either. This is what we're after. We need these and we need those in a fairly large quantity. Well, we got one ectoplasm. So I guess what we could do, we could build out a whole bunch of these hopping bonsais, uh, start making a bunch of saplings. That way we get it that much faster, right? So there's two of them. Yeah, so that's not bad. Well, anyway, I'm gonna let that go for a little while. Once we get a nice collection of those going, we'll be right back. All right, so we have duplicated the specter saplings. We are getting extras from these trees growing and we're also collecting a decent amount of the ectoplasm. Now we're not getting it really fast, but we're getting it fast enough that by the time we need it, we're gonna have all of the ectoplasm and we won't have to worry about it at all. So the idea is we wanna make something like uh, these specter chargers, right? So this does require us to have specter string, like every single one of those requires a string. That requires us to have the ectoplasm plus mana infused metal or mithril, whatever, that's easy. But this mana infused string, this is a little bit more difficult since that does require Batania. But it requires very little mana in order to make this string, but we are gonna need it. So that means we have to start into Batania. Um, so mystical string is what we toss in there. And mystical string is regular string with prosperity shards. And we've collected a whole bunch of those. We can actually just mine the ore for those, I think in the twilight. So that's not really that big of a deal, but we do have to venture into Batania at this point in order to get ourselves wireless power. Mm -hmm. So these can output quite a lot of power, 20,480 RF per tick. Now we were going to uh, use, I mean the whole purpose of everything we've been doing, right? Is to get to the garden cloche so we can produce plants in order to make biodiesel, in order to run our diesel generator, in order to make more power. That was what started us down this path. But I think we're actually going to hold off on using this diesel generator for one, I'm not really sure how much power it produces, and two, because we can make the magmatic dynamos from thermal expansion, and they're not super expensive, they require iron, Invar, Invar gear, redstone, and a uh, redstone transmission coil. Like that is it for the magmatic dynamo. And I believe by itself, it produces 100 RF per tick or 80 RF per tick, something like that. If we upgrade it all the way to resonant and then we put in the, uh, the thermal augments, these guys increases output. If we put in four of these, I believe each one of those magmatic dynamos can make 600 RF per tick. With how cheap those are, and we have infinite lava, to me it makes the most sense that we go down that path as far as getting power really quickly. Now that's not to say that we won't go back to this thing a little bit later, but for right now, like with how hungry that resonant jetpack is, we need power, we need it fast, and we need it as easy as we can get it so we can move around with that jetpack on and not have to worry about running out of power immediately. So uh, I think that's what we're gonna do as far as power generation goes, is we're gonna look at the, um, we're gonna make these, the transmission coils, and we're also going to do the magmatic dynamos. And we already have the heat sand we've seen earlier, like how easy it is for us to generate lava using this, this method here, uh, doing a cobblestone generator into a crucible with the heat sand underneath it. Uh, I'm not sure if we have a better method of producing lava, but that is quite quick, just as it is right now. So I think that is probably what we're gonna be doing here. Okay, so now that we have an idea of where we're gonna do our power, and we have an idea of how we're going to wirelessly transfer that power into our inventory while we're in another dimension, we need to start into Batania. Now there was uh, a quest line here for Batania, and I haven't even looked at this yet, so I'm not sure how far we can get, but I assume this is all gonna be relatively straightforward just to get to the point where we can make some mana. All right, so Mystical Fertilizer is our very first quest. And in order to make that, we just need a bright crystal from Lordcraft and then four of the same type of dye. Although this all says pigment. I don't know if we can use regular dye if it has to be pigment. I'm just kind of waiting for this. Okay, yeah, so it's like any any dye. So I guess bone meal probably would work or whatever. 
Okay, so let's grab ourselves a bright crystal. I'm not sure if we have one, but we do. Awesome. Let's actually make a few of them. So how about eight bright crystals and then die uh, bone meal, like I said, probably is going to work. So we'll try that out. So that plus that. Perfect. All right. So there is 24 floral fertilizer and we can always make more than this, but that should give us a quest complete. All right. So we'll claim our first reward and then we have to do the petal apothecary and the pure daisy as we do at the beginning of Batania. So a petal apothecary requires mystical flower cluster. Okay. So we have to have four of the same type of mystical flower. I think, I think it has to be the same ones, uh, two verdant crystals and then some chiseled blocks. Well, that's all relatively easy to do. Now the floral fertilizer in order for us to use this has to be clicked on grass. And as it so happens, I have bone mealed all of our grass like extensively. I even did this outer ring, uh, recently. So we don't really have any exposed grass available for us to mess with right here. So maybe the best place for us to do this would be in the twilight forest. I'm thinking that's like the, the most safe area. That's got a lot of grass that we can just right click on. Apparently zombie pigmen <laughs> decided to come here. Let's go ahead and vein mine away all this grass. I'm gonna have so many seeds. It's going to be disgusting. Okay. But did I get a mushroom? I you know what? I just said this was a safe place and now you're over here calling me a liar. All right, let's get rid of you. All right, you're done. Cool. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and right click this. So we get some of the mystical flowers. We'll just do this a few times and then we'll collect all of them. Cool. So we collected a whole bunch of the different mystical flowers. We've got a lot of them. In fact, I made some more mystical uh, bone meal, whatever the stuff was called. And I sprinkled it around to get some more of these different flowers. Turns out we need to make ourselves verdant crystals, which requires another mystical flower cluster, which again means we have to have four of the same type of one of these flowers. Yeah, so that's why we got a whole bunch of extra now. Um, so over here in the advanced arcane workbench, we have two bright crystals, two dents, and another one of these mystical flower clusters. So there is one of our mystical flower clusters done, and then the petal apothecary also requires one. Now, I wanted to uh, make the mystical flower seed in order to do that, so we'd only need to make four of these in total, but as it turns out, in order to do this, uh, we need to get ourselves one of these infusion crystals. There's different tiers, so like the lowest tier is the Inferium infusion crystal in order to make this Prudentium essence, which is required to make this seed, right? We need four of those plus the tier two crafting seed. Um... Anyway, getting back to this, the Inferium Infusion Crystal requires us to have a mana diamond, which means we have to have mana. Unless, actually, I haven't even looked. Did we get mana diamond somewhere? We've got, we've got mana steel. I don't think we've got mana diamonds at all. No, so we're pretty much unable to make the seeds to make more of these flowers. But yeah, like once we get to that point, like that'll be really good because the, uh, these mystical flower seeds, they will give us the mystical flower essence, which you can use to craft any of these different flowers. Yeah, that's really nice. You don't have to use the bone meal anymore. You can just make them from the mystical flower essence. Anyway, so moving on with what we're trying to do here, we're trying to make the petal apothecary. So we have the verdant crystals. We can make another mystical flower thing. Let's use these lime ones. we got a bunch of those. And uh, looks like we need four stone. I know I got a bunch of stone in my dink knoll uh, somewhere. There we go. So we should have everything, I think, now to make the petal apothecary. So we'll do that. So that should be a quest complete. No, that's part of a quest complete. My mistake. We have to make the, uh, the pure daisy as well, don't we? So that requires us to have four mystical white petals. All right, so I'm sure we got plenty of these white flowers, so I will just go ahead and do it this way. Uh, eventually, well, I'm not sure, because eventually we are going to make the seeds, so we probably don't have to, like, plant the petals, grow them, and then shear them like we normally would in another world. Yeah, with mystical agriculture, that changes the game a bit. So what we should have to do at this point is fill that full of water, grab ourselves a vanilla wheat seed, 
Uh, I, I don't know where we're gonna place this. Like, a lot of the stuff I'm just placing down temporarily until we actually start setting up stuff. Uh, so we just have to put water in here for those petals and then drop a seed on it. Yep. And then we get ourselves a pure daisy. So that completes the quest. Awesome. Okay, so we will claim that guy. So the next quests that we have available are making living wood or living rock. Now, I believe we need a living rock in order for us to proceed, but they're both made essentially the same way, I think, unless the recipe has been changed. Nope, that's just stone for that. So uh, we can, I guess we'll just grab some dirt. And we'll just do it this way. We're just going to tear our base up just a little bit for the short amount of time here. So we're going to plant our pure daisy, and then we just have to go through and place some stone around it. Cool. Yep, and after uh, one minute, it, this should change into the living rock, and then we should be able to proceed here. All right, so we now have the living rock and vein mine it for a quest complete. Sweet. All right, so we'll claim our, our AK for that one, and now we have unlocked the mana pool this is where we're gonna store our mana now this is a little bit more complex than normal it does require three luminous crystals so that is four complex crystals plus a glowstone to make four luminous now i believe we do have some complex crystals previously made so we'll grab those and we do have glowstone so we will make a glowstone block cool so now we should just be able to come over here to our arcane workbench one more time and do one of these and one of those and some of this. Awesome. Okay, so now that that's done, getting back to the mana pool recipe, we do need Apothecary Cauldron. This is from Reliquary. I don't know if I've ever made one of these before. This looks a little intimidating. So we need Infernal Claws, Nebulous Hearts, Catalyzing Glands. Well, I know we have the Catalyzing Glands. I am, I'm well aware we have those. Uh, Nebulous Hearts, yeah, we have those, and it was three of those, and then we needed was it Infernal Claws? I'm not sure about that. So it does not look like we have them here. Infernal, we do not have them here. Okay, so we are in need of this guy, which requires this guy. So Infernal Claws are made with molten core, slime pearls, rib bones, and leather. So I'm sure we have all of that. Slime pearls. Okay, and the other thing was molten cores. Oh yeah, we got everything. We're ready to go on that. My inventory, however, needs to be emptied because I have far too many flowers in it. Whoops. Uh, far too many flowers in there for us to do what we need to do. Okay, put all that away. Put this over here. Very good. So we needed mole, whoop, slime pearls, uh, molten cores. It was leather. I think rib bone. Was that all that was needed for this thing? Yeah, that's it. Okay, we just need two of those as well. So one, two, awesome. So now we have the Infernal Claws. We have everything else. We need a cauldron, which we made previously. Okay, so now that we have that, there's an Apothecary Cauldron. Use the brew potions from Potion Essence. I'm not really sure if I have done that before with Reliquary, but I'm also not really sure if that's something that we need to do either. So I guess we'll just put that on hold for now. Put all these other things away. All right, so we are done with that, done with that. So the mana pool, we have this, we have everything. Let's make ourselves a mana pool. Boom, mana pool made. I made the advancement vivid wave. Awesome. So I'll claim that. All right, so we have unlocked the Alchemist Catalyst and the ability to do the Runic Altar, these quests. Uh, we still have to make flowers to generate mana. And this is probably the easiest one, the Endo Flame. Um, so I think we will do this. So the Petal Apothecary plus two brown, a red, and I think it's a light gray. Yeah, all of that in the Petal Apothecary to make one Endo Flame. And then we just throw fuels on the ground like coal, blaze rods, whatever and it will convert that into mana. But we do need an intermediary step here before we can actually put mana into the mana pool. We do actually need to make ourselves a mana spreader. So living wood, mana spreader. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that one. So living wood is just made with wood around the 
uh, Pure Daisy just the same way. So one minute later, we'll be right back. And slowly but surely it's changing. There we go. So we will just vein mine all of that. Apparently that's not gonna go into my inventory. Okay, <laughs> there we go. So now we have the living wood. That completes another quest. We claim that. And finally, the mana spreader. That requires a verdant crystal. Uh, some type of a petal, I think. Yeah, a petal or one of those mushrooms. And then uh, living wood itself. So I think we had extra verdant. One of those. And then we needed one of the flowers over here. Let's use the brown one. In fact, we need to grab two of those brown ones. We needed a light gray. And then we also needed, was it red? Uh, let me look that up. Endo flame, just so I know for sure. Yeah, red. Okay. So that, that, those. Okay. So now that we have all of this stuff, we are trying to make the mana spreader. We will be able to do that now. Okay, cool. So let's do that. So mana spreader, make it, we're going to do with the brown petal. Not that the color matters, just that we have extra brown. That's all that matters. So mana spreader made, that should be another quest. All right, I'll grab my bucket. We need like an infinite water supply <laughs> next to this. We don't have it yet. So, oh, I also need to give myself a seed as well. So let's do that seed. There it is. Awesome. All this running around back and forth. Okay, so it is two brown, a red, a light gray, and a seed. And that gives us an endo flame. This will be our first little bit of mana generation. So the endo flame talks to a mana spreader, which sends the mana from the mana spreader to a mana pool. And then we have mana. Awesome. So let's grab a little bit of coal and we will just set this up. I guess I'm actually going to put this over here. We'll just put it up against the wall or something. It's starting to take up too much room with all the Batania stuff. And we'll have to figure out like a more permanent solution for this. But for right now, this will work. Okay. I think that will talk to the mana pool. I think we should be okay. And then when we put down the end of flame, since there's already a mana spreader here, we don't have to like link it it's already going to be pre-linked because it's the closest mana spreader we'll just go ahead and pop that open put a dirt here and our endo flame right there and drop a piece of coal and we should start getting a little bit of mana now again i don't really know how much we need oh you know what that doesn't seem to be oh yeah there we go i was gonna say that didn't seem to be putting mana in the mana pool but yeah it's just going really slowly because we only have one endo flame okay well, let's get back to what we're trying to do. We're trying to do the, uh, the spectry, the spectry coil and the, um, the charger. Also, we need the spectry energy injector. So this is another bit that we have to do. So we need a beacon, heavy steel plates, and then the spectry string. So that is made with the mana infused string. So we saw how to do that earlier. Let's take a look and see if we will be able to get this done with the little bit of mana that we are producing here. Drop another coal there for later. So we need string plus prosperity shards. Uh, We have prosperity shards here. I feel like I have a bunch of them. They should be in here. Don't I? Yeah, we got, okay. I was like, I know we had a bunch of them. Prosperity shards. All right, we'll grab that. Grab some string. Start turning these things. We're gonna need a bunch of them. So we'll start off with eight. And again, we will see like how much mana it's gonna cost for this. If I have to make a bazillion more of these endo flames or if this is gonna be enough mana. So we'll find out. Okay, well we had enough to make four and that didn't really take super long. Oh, whoop, I put the wrong string this one. Yeah, we still don't got enough mana to make any more right now. Okay, so it's either we let the mana trickle in like we're doing, or we make a whole bunch more of these endo flames. But I kind of feel like if we're gonna make a bunch more of the endo flames, I kind of want to start working on making the uh, the seed for the mist or yeah for Batania, right? The mystical flowers. So that might be the next thing that we work on is to try and get enough mana in that mana pool to make a mana diamond. I think that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and feed <laughs> that, that single endo flame some coal 
and then try and get that mana diamond made, and then we'll be right back, guys. All right, I tried waiting with just one endo flame. That's just way too slow. So I did make a second one, and it went relatively fast. So you can see as we're holding the diamond, it says there's a check mark. We can throw that in there, and there's our mana diamond. Awesome. So now that we have that mana diamond, we can look at making the Inferium Infusion Crystal, the which requires Inferium Essence and these base essence ingots. So let's go ahead and craft those up real quick. All uh, right, so we're gonna need more of the uh, Prosperity and back to this, Prosperity plus Platinum. Whoa. Platinum, sorry, clicked out of the game there for a second. Uh, so there is the Platinum. So we do that. This is for those. Sweet. All right, and then we just need the Inferium, which I know we got a bunch of. Quest completes. All right, so there's the Inferium Infusion Crystal. Does that give us a quest complete? I haven't even looked at this. I guess it does. Awesome. All right, so that one's done. Whoops. So that's done. So now we need Prudentium, which means we need the Frision Ingots or Frision. I'm not actually sure how you pronounce that. Uh, so we have the ore, but we have not processed that. I assume we can just put that in here and double it. Let's try. And that gives us, yeah, that's two. All right, let's just throw it all in there. This stuff we got from the Landia dimension. And I think that's enough for what we're trying to do here, right? So we wanted to make ourselves four of these. So we can only do one. Oh, it's, it doesn't know that that has multiple uses, I suppose. So we will go ahead and do it this way and manually add all of the ingredients in here. Cool. So there's that. And there's for the Prudentium essence. Is that a quest complete now? I feel like that should be. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we got that done. So, oh, you know what? We needed to make uh, four more of those because we have to do the tier one seed as well. And here we go. So now we have everything ready to be made and mystical flower seeds. Awesome. I feel like that's gotta be a quest complete as well because that's pretty important in this playthrough. So now that we have that, I guess I'm going to grab this. Oop, that's not what I meant to do. I actually didn't know. I can't right click on this anymore. Uh, oh, that's right. I had to use a special. Okay, well, I guess we'll put a torch here. I forgot I had to use a special uh, hoe on there in order to turn that into the tilled bedrock, tilled soft bedrock. Um, yeah, well, actually, I guess I need to move this whole thing over, don't I? Uh, yeah, the next thing that I'm going to do, we're going to do the mystical flower seeds, and we need to 10, 10, 10 those. And trying to do that without... Uh, the sprinklers over there is just gonna be a nightmare without the sprinklers and without the growth crystals and all that kind of stuff Yeah, not gonna be too good. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and move this stuff over rearrange things like we had it previously 10 10 10 those seeds and then we'll continue on All right guys, so I've been grinding a lot of this stuff just crafting all this off camera We're now making vibrant alloy. I believe for the first time in this series here I uh, just got done making a little bit more energetic alloy. We had four already previously made, so we had to have made that before. Uh, but yeah, I think that's another quest complete. Maybe I need 16 of them. I've been getting all sorts of quest completes here. I haven't actually looked at the quest. So yeah, you can see we got all the ones for the jetpack. All We got Signalum, we got Lumium, we got Enderium. We got the different upgrades here. Uh, we still have to convert them into the conversion kits, which we will here pretty soon. Uh, so as far as this, oh, energetic. Oh, I needed 12 of those on me. Ooh, okay, well, I guess we're not gonna get that quest complete, but we got these on us, which should be 12. So when we do the energetic again, we actually put that in our inventory, we'll unlock those quests. Uh, let me go ahead and claim all of this stuff. A lot of quests to claim here. Uh, we got one to claim here, and we got a couple to claim here. So we just collected 65 RAK, so that is really, really good. Okay, so now that we have the Vibrant Alloy, the reason why I was actually making that is so we could make these uh, Ender Fluid Conduits. There we go. So we got 20 Ender Fluid and we still got a Pressurized remaining. Uh, so we'll put that away, the Hardened Glass, the Regular Glass, all this stuff, Living Wood, Living Rock, we don't need that, the Conduit Binder, and I finally upgraded our uh, capacitor with the enhanced smelting one that we had collected previously. Cool. 
So now up to seven, all nearly eight stacks of this stuff. So that's getting up there. That's really, really good. Okay, so now that we have the Ender Fluid Conduit, we should be able to easily pipe lava into our magmatic dynamo. And then we're gonna have to figure out how we're gonna do the power after that. But let's get these conversion kits done. So there's the reinforced ones. And then we put that with this one, which should complete another quest. Yep. And then we'll do that with this one for yet the last quest. Cool, awesome. So we'll place these guys down. We'll just right click all that stuff on there and we will put the uh, transmission coils in here as well. Cool. So each one of these has maximum power 600 RF per tick. So that is gonna be really good. So now we just need to get lava into them, get the power out of them, and then put them into, actually let's get rid of all this stuff, put that into the Spectre Energy Injector. Now, uh, I was gonna get all this stuff done today, but unfortunately we have run out of time. But one more thing that I did notice about getting this thing, the uh, Ender Spectre Charger, we click all the way back. Where was it? Maybe it was the Ender Energy Injector. Yeah, this. So the Spectre Lens requires us to have Jade and you get Jade in the Urbis. So even though we've done all this stuff, we're getting ready to upgrade all of our power. We still can't even <laughs> do that wirelessly because we need this thing. This is what provides the wireless power to like these chargers, right? So this thing is our next goal. Well, I guess getting uh, Jade, that's our next goal, this guy. Uh, so we have to go into the Urbis and we have to find this, but we're going to have to wait until next episode. Now I left uh, the resonant jetpack charging most of this episode and only got 9 million, which is just over one eighth of the way, I guess, complete or one tenth, one tenth. Yeah, one tenth, just over one tenth of the way complete. So yeah, we definitely need this power going into our jetpack to charge it. We also need to upgrade our energetic infuser, the thing that actually provides power because currently it'll only do 100 RF per tick and just one of these does 600. So it definitely needs to be upgraded so it can provide more power. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. Bye-bye.